Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears and make them attentive to the words of your prophets, including John the Baptist, our patron. Anointed by your spirit, may we testify to your unquenchable light and eternal love with our lips and lives. Through Jesus Christ, the redeeming Lord, Amen. You might have noticed that the gospel readings with this new church year are from the gospel of Mark, considered the earliest gospel written. And how does Mark begin his book of good news the beginning the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ the Son of God notice this opening verse of Mark's gospel is not a sentence there's no verb the consensus of Biblical scholars holds that this opening verse is Mark's title for the gospel. And the focus of this morning's sermon is going to be the first six words of Mark's title. The beginning of the good news. In the original New Testament Greek, these six words are only three words. Three words, I would argue, that are among the most important in the Gospel of Mark. And I'm going to focus on only the very first word in the Greek, archi, meaning the beginning. I think it significant that Archie is the first word with which Mark begins his gospel. It's as if Mark wants us to know that he can't possibly tell the whole story of Jesus Christ's life and ministry. It's as if Mark is saying, I'll share with you what I know, but there's so much more to this story of Jesus, the Messiah. So everything that Mark has to say about Jesus, all the healing, preaching, all the teaching, exercising, and the climax of it all, Jesus suffering and death culminating in the triumph of the resurrection is only the beginning only the beginning of the good news about Jesus. There's still more to come. The story of Jesus isn't over. Rather, the spirit of Jesus Christ, risen and Lord, is calling us, you and I, daily to continue the story of the good news of Jesus in and through our lives, both as individual disciples of Jesus and together as the community that is the Church of Christ. It's not just John the Baptist who was called to prepare the way of the Lord. It's all of us also. Right here, right now, we are called to make a difference in the lives of the people God puts all around us, sends into our life. 
I think, for example, of your faithful and your enthusiastic support of our Christmas Angel Tree Ministry. You have generously responded to the call of the Spirit to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ with your gift cards. Shining divine light, the light of Christ, into the darkness of fellow Miltonians whose need is great. Families we have adopted as their Christmas angels. Families who might not have Christmas dinner or any gifts under the tree without you. Yes, through you, the gospel of Jesus Christ goes, goes on. Also, today is Pledge Sunday for this family of faith. Shortly, your pledges of support for the ministries of St. John the Baptist will be blessed and will be set apart for the work of Christ Church in this place in the coming year. Again, Jesus' work, Jesus' ministry isn't done. You are, you are continuing it. And as we gather virtually this afternoon for our annual congregational meeting, we will hear, we will hear how very much has been accomplished. Even amid the challenges and difficulties of the pandemic besetting us. So much has been done anyway. Would we prefer to gather and be present physically with one another, with our sisters and brothers in Christ? Absolutely, of course. And will that glorious day, when we will again be together, will it be a day for jubilant celebration and inexpressible joy? For sure. Yet even as we lament our separation now from one another, let us rejoice and let us give thanks to God for all that has been accomplished by this church, by you in the last year, COVID be damned. Every expression of the divine love incarnated in Jesus that first Christmas night, whether it be huge or tiny, every expression continues and furthers the work of Christ, the good news of Christ. Loving our family by deciding with great sorrow that this year it's best not to gather at Christmas with our loved ones, wearing a mask in public and, and maintaining that six foot distance, making a donation to a worthwhile charity, writing a note of comfort and encouragement to a friend who is struggling with depression or grief, telephoning or zooming with a relative or neighbor we know is lonely and feeling so isolated. And, well, the list, the list is endless. We are not helpless. We are not unable, even in the throes of pandemic, to continue the ongoing work of God the God who is love, the God who sent Jesus both to exemplify, to embody, to incarnate, incarnate that love, and yes, to redeem us and the world through it. And you know something? 
We could very well find ourselves lifted from the doldrums of COVID fatigue and our spirits brightened and our faith renewed and our love deepened and our hope restored by our incarnations, our incarnations of God's love. Everything St. Mark wants to tell about Jesus Christ, Son of God, starts with that one word, Archie. Beginning. Now it's our turn. We are, we are called by the Spirit. What a privilege. We are called by the Spirit to continue Jesus' story, to continue the good news of Jesus Christ. Through us, to those around us, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.